All right, guys, Adam Russman here with the Space Wolf blog. Today, I want to be doing a quick review of a Kickstarter that I helped fund. This is the Integrated Wargame Buildings uh, from wargame-model-mods.co.uk. You can email them at wargamemodelmods at aol.co.uk. Don't worry, I'll have the links in the description below. Uh, but this is a Kickstarter that actually came through pretty quickly. Uh, very cool pieces of scenery. And, you know, with this page now I want to focus on all aspects of the gaming not just Space Wolf you know build this and whatnot I want to talk about hobby I want to talk about terrain and terrain is a very important thing to me and uh, let's take a quick look around and kind of describe my philosophy of terrain and then we'll come back so you can have a proper context when we talk about these pieces of scenery all right guys welcome to the Fang and this is uh, one of the main game rooms that we have for our club and uh, this is our 12 foot by 4 foot table uh, right now we actually have a battle going on between Keith and Alfred, they had a stop, and I think beginning of turn three, these are the Thousand Suns versus some Tyranid. It's going pretty well. As you guys can see, this table is very terrain heavy. Uh, we try to make you know as realistic pieces of terrain as you can. Unfortunately, because they had to stop and had to finish up, I've been using this for some uh, <laughs> just some space right here. Here's a piece of terrain that I'm working right now, and look at what we got there. Maybe that'll go in the center here if we can get it to fix. Uh, this is actually a piece of the battlefield in a box. Unfortunately, you cannot only get these things for a limited time. So if you see some, you like it, guys, grab it. But we really try to focus on terrain. You know, the one thing about terrain is you can get burnt out from painting it real quick. You see this uh, piece of pipeline that we, we made. Uh, here's one that's actually finished. But the fun thing is, is that if you don't finish it, you don't have to paint it, you can still throw it on the table. Maybe a little dry brush action to break up some of the patterns. But terrain really pulls together a game. You know, I do try to focus on painting every aspect of my miniature. Like here's my Bellicor right there, making sure you do his base and everything else. It just makes a more realistic game. It's more enthralling and, and kind of puts me in the game more. Uh, here's another board right now that's been <laughs> using for the demos and to hold some other other uh, models. And uh, here we have some shelves that we have terrain on. Right now, all the terrain is empty because all the other tables are are built. There's some more stuff up there. But very important to the game. This really sets us up to do some more interesting thing with terrain and, you know, kind of pull together and, you know, bring the game even to a more realistic feel. All right, guys, let's give you some size references. Here's some of the quick shade blood claw I've been working on. I did an article last week about this guy, just a really quick paint job and kind of focused on, you know, a little extra love on the bases just to get those guys on the board a little bit faster. But you guys can see the kind of the size and the point of reference. And the cool thing about these pieces of scenery, of course, is you can see the LEDs that are coming through. We got red over here, blue over here, and here's a little object with some red. And very interesting thing. So I want to talk about this Kickstarter specifically, how I feel about it, some pros and cons of using this material, and uh, kind of open up the conversation with you guys to some different ideas of what you can do with this. All right, guys. So. Let's first talk about the price for this. This was a Kickstarter, so of course, Kickstarters usually have a little bit of a deal with a price. Let me put that up there. Oh no, this is two different buildings, but that looks pretty cool like that. And I'm still in the midst of modeling these. Of course, these are laser cut MDF board, which is an interesting medium to work with by the nature of the material, because it's just wood fibers with glue in it that makes the board itself. As soon as you attach super glue to, I mean, not even super glue, this Elmer's glue, it adheres pretty solid. But there is some pros and cons with this. This stuff really absorbs moisture. So once you put paint on it, it's gonna suck up the paint really quick. Another problem with MDF from modeling standpoint is that with these, there is plastic sheets right here, as you guys can see, and plastic windows. You kind of need to build this thing out without glue on it to get it to fit properly. I guess you can paint each panel one by one. These units right here are gonna be a little bit of a pain for me to go back and paint over top of it because I don't wanna put any paint on the plastic here and also I don't wanna cover up the LEDs. So I'm gonna open up the kit. Uh, price range for these, I believe I got five buildings uh, for 200 bucks. 
and they vary in, in some different sizes. I've only built these three. I think I actually had five plus this. I think this was a bonus add-on. I might even have two of these. I have to I have to check. It was so long with the Kickstarter. And I do a lot of on Kickstarters. Um, I'm fascinated by it. I love helping small businesses. I'm an entrepreneur myself. So anytime that I can help out and help somebody start their business and at the same time get a great product or something I really like, I'm really excited about it. And I, and I don't discriminate. I don't just focus on the games. I look at everything. Uh, but for the gaming community, Kickstarter is huge, as many of you may know. This is how the package came in. Now, this was shipped from England. Nothing was damaged, but this was a little raw. I'm kind of using this to store my kit back and forth. So a couple pros and cons with this. Uh, the buildings themselves were kind of intuitive. There are some difficulties when, with MDF-type scenery because sometimes you have to be a specific way. Like, for example, this board right here has to go, this has to be the top, and this has to be the bottom. If you flip it, it'll still work, but you'll have gaps. So in the middle of gluing this, I had to rip this back apart and, and reapply it. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. And the, the top isn't glued on yet, but the wires in there, you can see these really kind of cool LEDs, these copper wires with little light diodes in there. It gives some really cool effects. Each of the buildings, you got one of these little battery packs with the light wires in here. And you guys can see, you know, this is very low energy. It takes three double A's. And you can see where this glue is. It's where the uh, light shines through this stuff. And actually, I like these little, these little plastic pouches. I've been cutting apart little bits and stuffing them in here to organize it for when I'm doing my hobbying. And as a hobbyist myself, I do get excited and sometimes get ahead of myself and then kind of go back and, oh, you know, maybe I should have painted this stuff. So on one of these other uh, projects, I might try to paint them first, then put them together and then see how we're doing. Uh, because I do see a lot of guys who play MDF stuff and it usually stays at MDF color. Uh, so on the downside, the instructions weren't that detailed. Um, there was some problems with the way these printed out. For example, there was a template here for Windows. I don't know if I have it still here. Probably don't. So they said like an outline of some windows to trace this plastic sheet to cut your window shapes out. And that's kind of hard to perceive. Well, unfortunately, when they printed it, the scale wasn't correct. They didn't check the scale before they printed it. And so the windows, the, the actual ink was too small to, you know, cut the plastic out. You know, a, a slight oversight, but if you're not catching that and you go and, and cut the windows early and then you come back, it can be a, it can be a big problem. And some of the, the pieces are kind of intuitive, but there's not really detailed step-by-step -step instructions in regards to somebody who's coming on that maybe not be the best hobbyist. You know, everything is just probably... I don't know, eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less, maybe three sixteenths uh, MDF board, which, you know, burnt MDF kind of smells like cinnamon. I don't know. Makes me feel like I'm having a stroke sometimes. And you have all your panels. You can do a lot of modifications with this too. They give you a tray of stuff to just add panels to, you know, add maybe a little bit of more texture and thickness to the scenery. You can glue this on anywhere. I might take uh, this big flat piece right here and just add some more texture on there so it doesn't look like a big flat piece. Uh, there's no windows on that section. I kind of was wondering why that was, but you know, it is what it is. Here is another building. You can't really see the uh, finished product, but it is kind of cool. All these different pieces. I don't know what the straw is for, but I mean the detail and you can see the footprint of the building right here. It's going to be pretty large and one of these actually is motorized and has a area that rotates inside of it they actually gave you a motor another battery pack for the motor so when you flip this thing on it'll actually have a fan or port inside there rotating to uh, change the lighting effect to add some motion there is one in here too it had a satellite dish and the satellite dish actually spun around there's different options to have the satellite dish made out of mdf or different colored plastic board so, pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy with the, the purchase. So that's, you know, three more buildings there. So maybe I only had one of the bonus buildings unless another bonus building is, is packed in a similar pack. All right, guys, so let's talk about some of my complaints in regards to MDF. First off, because it's all a standardized thickness, 
it can add a lot of hollow feel to some of the scenery. You really got to get in there and add additional elements like we see here, these ridges here, to kind of break it out. I would also suggest when you come through here adding, adding some gravel, adding some dirt to make it look real. Like for example, this piece of terrain here, which is battlefield in a box, I repainted it, added some different element, added a wash, went and added some grass, just to break up the patterns a little bit, make it seem like it's more real. I have a similar problem with some of the 40K terrain, but simple things like I went through here and painted all these bolts silver, just to break up the pattern a little bit. It adds a little bit more depth, it makes it feel real, it makes it feel like it has you know, more substance. Or if we pull this guy forward over here, you know, this is some kind of power generator and because of the nature of MDF, we're getting light bleed through there. Now I could go in there and, and fill all these holes before I paint it. You know, and these slight lasered grooves in here are cool to break up some of the, of the material, but you need more things like this to actually raise surfaces to increase the overall feel of the model. The lighting effects do add some interesting features and if we, you know, turn the lights down in here, that really looks cool. Uh, if you had some other lights, some secondary light for night fighting games, it just changes the ambience of the game. Some people don't like light effects with models and I can appreciate that as well. You know, it can seem kind of silly at times and some of these lights, like the one here, doesn't have a cover over it like this. So that one will be cleaned up a little bit. I think I am going to put that up there. I think that looks pretty awesome. So it is pretty cool. One thing I like about these as well is we don't have too much bleed over of the actual beginning of the area terrain. I th kind of think that's disingenuous sometimes to have a model right there and for some reason they're getting a cover save when there's no realistic cover just because they step inside area terrain. You know, if I have my giant knight with this big toe and terrain, that's kind of a house rule thing here that we kind of call BS. I think it has a good feel. The scale is perfect for 40K guys. I actually added a little barrier to this roof so this can be kind of an outpost where your troops can line up on. Still fit the 32 millimeter base in there. Of course, I would probably never have my blood claws sitting up there uh, taking cover. Maybe more, more of a spot for my long fangs. I am interested to see how the painting goes. Uh, you know, getting rid of some of these angles may take some layers of super glue or, or Elmer's glue to kind of fill in those gaps. At the same time, be able to paint some of these areas, uh, but not paint them in a way where we're gonna cover up the detail, because that's just basically burnt in a very, very shallow uh, laser cut. The focus is right there. So, interesting, I am worried about this. I have uh, bought some other MDF scenery that I put together, was not as detailed with this, didn't like it as much, and it became kind of a, oh man, I'm never gonna use this stuff the way I like my other scenery to look, and that's pretty highly detailed. When I look at pieces like this, I just feel like there's more weight and there's a substantial realness to it. Also, that might be because of the painting effects and the dirt effects and stuff like that. There's more texture, there's more uneven space. So applying that kind of hobby work to that might help. Other elements like things like these crate, I think these are from Pegasus. Decorating around the piece of a uh, terrain will add a little bit more depth to it as well. So it's all about balancing. One thing I do suggest when you guys are fielding terrain on the table. Watch out with mixing too much different terrain. It doesn't look right. You know, some of the Pegasus stuff looks really good next to some of the, the GW stuff. The GW stuff is a little bit thinner, uh, so sometimes it can look a little different, but if you start mixing too much of it, I just think that it really hurts the feeling of the board. Uh, you know, not to say that you, you can't buy one of these and buy one of these and, and hobby them and paint them the same, but you know, these just look so different. Even the battlefield and the box stuff, I believe, looks very different than some of the GW stuff. So when I field this stuff, I usually field it with other similar pieces of terrain. All in all, I'm pretty excited about this. This was a fun project to do. You can see how they have little Velcro on each of these. So you can easily change the batteries out. That's really cool. And then plug it back in there. Easy access to get everything. And like I said before, you can kind of do whatever you want to do with these. If you don't want to put in lights, if you do want to put in lights, like I said before, this piece is still not glued in there. So you can do whatever. I mean, theoretically, 
I couldn't model this in a way so we could take the top off and put guys inside that second floor. I do have to put a door on here someplace. I'm thinking about putting a door right here and a door right here and maybe open this back up and putting a, a door or one of these elevator, that's for an elevator door would make sense so it's more visually interesting. And I think I'm gonna play that up there if I don't need the extra spots. But cool stuff, definitely something that is in a reasonable price range. Uh, this was a more of an expensive Kickstarter that I did. I mean, you're looking at, at five buildings uh, for 200 bucks with all the lighting effects, that could be that could be a little a little steep. Uh, you're, you're you're talking about 40 bucks a model. It's not terrible, uh, and that included shipping, which was good, but a little bit on the pricier side. Now I did get a, a bonus building, and I think there is another bonus building in there. I might have to check my Kickstarter to make sure that's all all legit and I got what I needed to get. But I'm pretty happy with them. And I tried to actually go for the more simpler buildings. He, they had a lot of, of buildings for, for option. Try to test the waters at the same time, give those guys a pretty good support. And you know, the detail on these, let me pick this one up and get a closer shot. It, it's pretty good. I mean, adding the vents and stuff like this to break up the patterns. Uh, I gotta move that light a certain place. So, I mean, little things like that. I'm, I am a little fearful that that will get lost in the painting process a little four plaque this little radiator I, you know a little the texture and has a fans and the little fans are actually separate pieces in there uh, so pretty cool all in all well hey guys thanks for uh, tuning in please subscribe give us a like and make, make sure you guys check out uh, the blog at space the space wolf blog links below and uh, of course if you're a beer and bolters fan for the podcast remember it's not for those with sensitive sensibilities uh, check that out and also nerd rage radio podcast uh, we try to you know run the gambit between uh, separating our 40k stuff and our other comic book nerdy stuff and thanks guys for subscribing and watching and hope to see you soon take care